start. Uh, so, uh, my name is Bartek. I'm the uh, chief designer at, uh, at Jutsu Games. Uh, I was directly responsible for the implementation of 911 operator and then the design of 112 operator and uh, Rustler. Uh, for the last two years, I am also a chief producer at Games Operators Publishing, and there I work closely with the developers of Radio Commander, Transport Incorporated, and 10 more pre productions. Uh, some might also connect me with Playway, uh, as I also worked with them and I'm still the co-creator co of the project creation rules there, uh, so I'm still in touch. Uh, this is roughly our portfolio. Uh, let me just check if I'm recording. Yes, I am recording and let me check again if all the audios are correct and fine and loud and clear. Sound is good, good nice to hear that uh, so let me carry on uh, so um, uh, the first thing about the trailer creation uh, and the issue behind it uh, is uh, well is your game worth making and this is what we are going to uh, concentrate on uh, today uh, so um, first of all is your game interesting uh, and can you make an attractive game like you personally or as a game developer uh, and then will you earn money like is your investment profitable and uh, ours as uh, as a publisher as well uh, so uh, those are the the questions uh, the problems that we need to solve as soon as possible and when you can you answer the questions well the sooner the better uh, and most often that's once your game goes public and that's far too late. Uh, we want to know if our investment is going to be profitable far earlier. And uh, sometimes well, you can do that uh, uh, when investors or publishers throw money at you even at the, at the pitch or prototype level, but this doesn't happen too often. Uh, so there is a way to uh, find ourselves uh, somewhere in the uh, in the middle uh, and this is what we are going to talk about today so the solution here uh, the, the the simplest solution that we came out uh, recently with, with quite a few projects um, that is to pre-produce and check the audience as soon as possible uh, and how we can do that uh, well, this is one of my favorite uh, charts um, that shows uh, how the players learn about your game once it's re released. So like half a year later after the game is released, uh, we ask the people how did they learn about the game. And apparently the first place is Steam, actually the Steam landing page, uh, the Steam uh, uh, home page that, that shows the banners of uh, all the other games featured or not featured. Then there is YouTube uh, and by this I mainly mean YouTubers playing the game, like the biggest YouTubers. Then there is Facebook and actually mainly Facebook ads that, that, uh, that show your game. Uh, then the media and I mean the classic media, uh, the press releases like IGN on GameStar. And then you have friends, just, just spoken recommendations basically, or maybe shares on Facebook. And then all the other things are just 1%. So if there, you think about conference, sorry, but you're gonna get end somewhere around here. Uh, as cruel as it is, uh, that's the fact, but please mind that this is uh, the situation once the game is released. It looks far different uh, before the game is released, once you uh, collect the wish list. Uh, so let's go through the Steam landing page, uh, Steam homepage. Sorry, uh, how does it look like when? Well, we have the festival now, so it's a bit different at the top. But then uh, over here, this is the the most uh, important part, featured and recommended. That can make like thirty percent of all your Steam page visits like globally, even if you're there on for one day, then you have special offers. This is actually the only part moderated by, um, uh, by Steam. Then you have some uh, players, uh, players like you love. This is matched by tags usually. Uh, and also somehow um, the, the Steam reviews are related here. Then you have community recommendations as curators. Then you have discovery queue. That's a huge thing. That might get like 20% of your views. 
Then a couple of more places like um, recently updated to the, the developers and publishers that you know. And then apparently this is the, the, the section and the only section that will show your game before it is released. And this will actually show your game uh, only like two weeks before uh, the release. Please mind that there is a title. Actually, the, the pictures are not downloaded. So mind that actually everything people know about your game is the title alone. Then there is Steam streaming pages. And this make make like 1% of your views if you get to the top and like getting 5,000 viewers. So if you, uh, if your name and, uh, and banner or, or just a small screenshot is, uh, is good enough, then you get curiosity. Uh, and once you get players curiosity, then you have his attention and he clicks uh, your banner or the video and once he gets there he gets to the steam landing page the, the project landing page uh, that's the one and uh, what does he do then well the video is usually played automatically uh, he check the banner he, he watches the, the video please mind that the audio is turned off by default so your video must speak for itself without the audio uh, then there is a wish list and following buttons. Uh, as as an uh, admin myself, I don't see the wish list button here, uh, but uh, I see uh, just the follow button. Then you have the descriptions, but actually I think less than one percent people go to descriptions. Uh, well, they do when they buy the game, but not around here. And uh, once they decide to go for wish list additions. Uh, this goes here into the Steam um, uh, Partners to uh, Steam uh, App Admin page. Uh, when you actually can see for that's for one nine one one operator, uh, this was the release date. There was actually basically nothing before that. But once the game goes public and Steam features is enabled because the the wish list was high and uh, uh, and sales went up, uh, all those spikes are the sales. Uh, mind those uh, those two terms impressions this is how many times our name and banner was displayed during this time and then how many visits the steam landing page had uh, you can actually check the details uh, how many uh, how many percentage did the landing page did it, it can go as high as 60 percent from the home page uh, from other product pages as well uh, it can go like 30%. Uh, this is not sorted by, by impressions, but uh, you can go through details around here on your project. Uh, if you give the project to the publisher, the publisher should allow you to, to see those, so those data, so no problems about it. So again, the, pro the, the potential player decision process is like this. First, you get an impression, banner or something displayed, either by scrolling Steam or scrolling YouTube or scrolling Facebook. Uh, and once you get the impression, uh, the banner or the thumbnail is displayed, the name is catchy uh, and or descriptive, banner and uh, drives attention, then you get a click and you get a view, a visit to your uh, Steam landing page. If the trailer is fancy, uh, the description is nice, uh, then you get a wishlist addition pro and hopefully a follow as well this, this actually the follow helps uh, also but we will cover this later and then about two years later ups and downs hard work maybe kickstarter uh, etc uh, beta test and all the other stuff the games goes live and the players receive notification that this game is now available they either receive it by email or just uh, again on steam landing page home page uh, and then they buy and play uh, then if many people buy your game then the game is good the steam features the game and more people buy uh, your game and this goes this loops uh, closes uh, uh, steam features it as long as it sells uh, this was actually covered by another presentation uh, from a game industry conference in 2019. Please uh, check it uh, online. It should be still available. So this part is relatively easy. Um, 
relatively just you just have to set the new name that uh, that hasn't been taken yet and then you have uh, a much more critical part that means making the fancy trailer uh, so this is called a wishes terror by, by some like uh, why do i have to care about this wishes shouldn't i just care about making a good game well in classic approach yes you could uh, but uh, from a business perspective uh, the honest wishes additions are the best indicator that the game might be a success and this is actually something that we can measure in advance uh, so that's the best decision to, to that's the best thing to base the decision on if you thinking about carry on the project or canceling the project so going through rough numbers let's assume 3000 wishes additions within a month uh, if you get this and but this actually fluctuates throughout the throughout the, the whole development process but let's assume you can get this and then if you your development goes for two years you get like 72,000 wishes additions that might uh, convert to 50 like to 100,000 uh, sales first year uh, the, these numbers might be higher might be lower no guarantees there but this is actually measurable uh, and then you have one if so if sales times price times 50% is like two times the budget then return success this is how we define the success okay you get a return of investment I mean we ask the publisher uh, uh, but as well as the developer because usually you're gonna get some from those uh, some uh, revenue share from this uh, this 50 percent is the, the the taxes the the steam uh, steam revenue uh, and uh, some returns or some discounts so uh, th there are other indicators like crowdfunding or pre-sales but that's even better because you can actually prove that people throw money at you or they say just shut up and take my money and uh, this is actually better if you can do this that is perfect however th this usually takes much more than a trailer to to uh, uh, to get some money there are all bad indicators as well like uh, uh, other channel members some people consider uh, discord members uh, as a good indicator I don't think so uh, they are not really uh, obligated to anything uh, they don't get such easy notifications uh, there are pre-registration on mobile but uh, this again uh, does not correspond so well to this approach because you can do pre-registrations for 90 days only so that's usually far too late uh, maybe you can some people count YouTube views and marks but this actually m means that maybe your video is catchy or it's funny but it doesn't really mean that people are going to buy your game that they they are joining the wish lists that they they wish for this game media interest that's also again might be misleading as they are might be interested that something's controversial about your game something interesting that maybe you did another game and now you do do this one this done, doesn't prove a thing yet okay so what's the process here uh, so the classic development model will be like this you start with a pitch uh, you, you design the game pitch the game to some investors uh, to publishers or just to your team if you have money and uh, to development that to develop that then you go with a prototype something playable that usually have uh, mock-ups then uh, maybe you will start with a teaser uh, I will define the teaser just just in a moment for sure you go vertical slice alpha beta gold and then at somewhere at this stage you give the build to uh, uh, to someone that makes trailers and say hey play this game find the most fancy moments and make me a trailer pseudo and then and, and go uh, and, and please give me the trailer well this is far too late after the release people maybe buy it or no uh, but this actually means that the whole budget or like three quarters of the budget was already spent and you're not really sure if the game is good uh, so maybe you this uh, you ask yourself is it good at the pitch level but how do you measure it you ask at the prototype level uh, but still there is no clear indicator if you can actually deliver the game as long as you don't have a solid portfolio and proves that your team can do that uh, so uh, just about the teaser this is uh, one of the teaser examples
112, what's your emergency? Yeah, please mind that this was just a teaser. So um, uh, in the classic approach, this, this might work if it's a sequel or if it's a game based on, uh, on, on a big studio or, uh, uh, or some IP. But in most cases, this doesn't work. This didn't show anything. This didn't, didn't show gameplay, nothing. This did just show that this is a sequel, that the sequel is going to be. So that made its role as a teaser. But what we want to do here and how we're going to convince people just to play a game that doesn't uh, yet exist or is still under development, we show them the gameplay because I, hopefully they want to play the game, not only watch it because they can do it on YouTube. So uh, the idea here is to move the gameplay trailer as soon as possible, even before the prototype. So then it goes like this. You just have the pitch and you start with the gameplay trailer. Uh, we have to add some things to the pitch at this stage, but you can basically go with the gameplay trailer development as soon as you get the pitch. Maybe you do some mockups instead of a prototype. This is a bit different uh, because prototype is usually playable. Mockup is just for show, just for display. Uh, and then you ch publish the Steam page and you uh, check if people are interested. If they are interested, then you go carry on with the full development process. If they are not, then you scrap and start again. Uh, maybe in the middle you, uh, you do some pre-orders or crowdfunding. That's usually at the vertical slice level or later. Uh, once the game is playable, you can show it to some YouTubers uh, or, or people and um, you actually want them to ask to give you some money for development. Okay, so why are we gonna do this? Like why, do, why do trailer driven game development and start with the gameplay trailer as soon as possible? So, a couple of reasons. First, to check the interest. Is your idea clear? Are people interested? Can you reach them? Is your graphical style fancy enough? Uh, those are all the questions that your trailer basically answers. Uh, to check yourself, that's the second reason. Can your team deliver? Uh, because maybe you put your bar too high at this stage and uh, well, we don't have a guarantee if we can complete the project or not. Uh, so uh, we want to check at this very early stage if you can deliver a, a successful complete milestone such as a gameplay trailer. Then to skip like 95% of the content, models, audio, levels, testing, balancing, bug fixing, uh, settings window, loose conditions, load and saves, briefings, most of the UI tutorials, even core loop and gameplay in general. This actually saves you like 90% of the budget and time. So that's the reason, save money and time and uh, not invest in projects that won't find uh, satisfactionary audience numbers. Okay. So how are we gonna do this? Uh, so the easiest, classy and most reliable way is to write down your unique selling points that are the pitch level, think how to visualize them, which game element, which game moment actually shows that. So write down a scenario, paint a storyboard, animate it, develop, animate each scene in game engine, and then iterate, iterate like 10 times over. So please be patient. This is the way of doing the trailer driven development. Uh, so first you write a scenario and this is basically usually enough to start with, uh, with a publisher as well that wishes to invest at this stage at uh, at uh, game production. And this is basically what this even tra uh, the trailer development, uh, 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 the game trailer competition is about. Uh, just delivering the trailers, not necessarily the game build. So write a scenario. Then the, the, I would recommend to do, go with, uh, with just four columns first define a shot ID because you're going to use them quite a lot. If you're going to modify it, just write 7A, 7B, 7C, or just, just skip, a, uh, skip a shot later on. Don't modify the IDs. Think about how long does it take. Usually a shot takes about a second, maybe less, maybe more. Uh, describe what each scene is going to uh, be about. Uh, and then think about text. What text are you going to display? 
what is your unique selling points or what describes your game the best way another call means for audio because surely you're gonna uh, use some uh, sound designer as well to um, uh, to uh, deliver the full trailer and this is usually another person so and there's a comment but that's uh, skippable uh, so the pro tips at this stage would be uh, first of all no logo on the trailer opening sorry but as long as you're not a blizzard or electronic arts or creative assembly nobody cares about who does it well even about the publisher um, so better go with the most interesting parts at the beginning shots should be like max five seconds one second or shorter or preferred that's because making like a one shot video this is a horrible complication like uh, this is hardly manageable and maintainable most interesting shot goes in the first five seconds this is because uh, all the previews like um, the facebook uh, videos are played automatically and you have just those five seconds to get attention this works also with the unskippable ads if we're gonna use this video as an ad and might we might uh, by the way this is very similar to like uh, for example tinder people have like five seconds uh, decision making if they like it or not and this is exactly what happens with uh, your with your video when it goes through um, the facebook homepage or youtube homepage you'd either just catch an eye with, uh, with the short uh, few seconds with, with the banner and the name or you get lost uh, shots must be related to the text with US unique selling points so it's better to uh, correspond uh, for those unique selling points use huge letters animated style text max four words and I mean four words not five like play on real maps kill natives connect cities renovate houses whatever describes your game with best with an action and an object or noun and verb uh, and then go with about five in five to eight unique selling points per video so not overall always with, with like 20 of those starting from most important to most impressive uh, i would say put a separate uh, slide with for those texts just to be sure that people read it that they spend this half a second or a second to read those two words and because your game uh, might the gameplay might not be descriptive enough do not show anything that you won't deliver in the final game so it's not uh, good to to, uh, to mix it with CGI's or with some concept arts that are not going to be with in the final game uh, this just doesn't count and this is misleading for your end user the player uh, so then draw a storyboard if you have the scenario done uh, let's draw it this, those are actually my pictures I'm not a painter and this took me each of them like one minute to, to draw and this is enough this is honestly good enough and I'm not ashamed to show this I know that some graphic designers might hate, hate me at this moment but sure seriously this is enough all you need is a person that have some imaginations for for the picture for how do you uh, for the perspective and stuff just write some arrows where does it move and okay then maybe you would like to animate it and this is how an animated storyboard looks like that's for cryospace this usually it takes like a week or two to complete And once you have this and once you have a good impression 
uh, you can carry on with the development of each particular scene. Uh, so uh, this is how the final gameplay would look like. Evacuation sequence activated. Please mind that this game had no gameplay. There was no prototype, nothing. This was right straight from the game uh, engine. So it basically corresponds to, uh, and there is a call to action, uh, it corresponds one to one with, uh, with the prototype or the, actually the storyboard. So the second way of doing this is to make a record a placeholder. Uh, if you don't, don't feel like drawing or actually live action would be more sophisticated or uh, easier for you. So this is what we did once. Uh, we actually just sit around and re read the script out loud. Sir, I've just received a report of a large fire in the forest to the east. What are the weather conditions like? It's very dry and windy today. With the prevailing winds, the fire will spread quickly towards the city. And this transferred to a trailer like this. Let, actually, let me show you. I just received a report of a large fire in the forest to the east. How fast is it spreading? Let me show you the direct comparison. Sir, I've just received a report of a large fire in the forest to the east. How fast is it spreading? Very quickly, sir. The weather is windy and dry today, so it will reach the city soon. Notify all fire stations and put out a mutual aid call to fire stations in nearby cities. Roger that. We have 15 units in route. Unit T-81, move to sector E-4. Fire brigade on the way! Okay, mind how the how did it actually look like uh, at the beginning and, um, and at the end. So, well-planned scenario, less work, fewer iterations, uh, better plan ahead. Uh, okay. So, how to get to actual footage uh, in between? So, first uh, option is to use animator tools go for 3d max uh, and such tools uh, or you go for a, for game engine and, and the unity and the unreal fits perfectly uh, here and this is what i would recommend here and now uh, so the pros for using the animator tools it's, it's generally simpler because what you wanna gonna do what you want to deliver is a is a is a trailer uh, but there are consequences. So Steam's asked for bills recently. That might be the first aspect that we wouldn't recommend to go for the trailer only. Uh, but you might not easily convert those effects and animations to game editor as well. Uh, and this is a case. Usually those tools have different formats or a different uh, approach like uh, models can be a million polygons large and this won't fit the game. So uh, I would recommend to use uh, game engine at this stage. So um, the pros for this are that you test your graphic skills, test effects, uh, post effects, and all the other stuff that might be necessary. You utilize your programming skills and sometimes it will be more handy. Uh, you use same models, uh, same animations. And the consequences here is that it's not so flexible. Actually, those engines are designed more to develop the game rather than develop uh, uh, a game trailer. Uh, anyway, what you need to do is ma just make those one second shots and not the whole uh, footage because you still need editing at the end. Technical tips here. Uh, so uh, first of all, you model only what's gonna be in the trailer. You know from the storyboard what's gonna be there. So instead of uh, modeling 10, 20 enemies that you're gonna have, you just model three, like the simplest one and the, and the boss at the very early stage. 
then uh, you implement only when it helps or it's easier or it's faster uh, than animation so if you're gonna show like 20 enemies at the same time it's usually easier to implement that rather than animate it at least it's more maintainable if you're gonna do some changes you do it uh, with game with code with programming skills rather than reanimating each of those uh, characters again uh, then split each trailer scene to, to game engine scene this also helps quite a lot at least managing the, the, uh, the project uh, use engine tools unity recorder for example that's a great tool because otherwise uh, if you want to go for full HD videos you would need to uh, uh, you would need to make a build go full screenshot and then record screen as uh, it was described on previous presentation but you need to record that's available since unity 2019.3 uh, gives you the option to uh, to record uh, and target the footage like like that you want the 30 frames per second and please make sure that you're gonna have uh, 30 frames per second no less you don't really have to go more anyways uh, the, the streaming engines like YouTube and Facebook gonna uh, compress this down uh, and there are a couple of more reasons like like what's the compression and uh, what's what's the what's the uh, resolution here uh, really this helps a lot and then you add text and UI in post effects like Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere or any other tool maybe even Windows Movie Maker if you prefer that so some in most cases you will want to have clear game uh, gameplay footage without UI uh, because UI might be overloaded so better don't put that in your uh, footage directly do it later put it uh, in post-production uh, more tips so uh, the trailer will be mostly viewed in small windows uh, and that means people not gonna maximize it they're gonna watch it in the very small video uh, small window uh, so um, it should fit those places especially in terms of colors and text scale um, therefore zoom to the elements like single UI icons small units details some small text that you want to uh, your viewer to see don't think about just just highlighting it or now just just use a camera and move it that might mean that you might need to require ultra HD recording or you just some need some game engine tricks like actually zooming in your game engine uh, minimum and satisfying resolution is, is full HD then proportions uh, should be 16 to 9 or 21 to 9 that uh, means ultra wide this actually helps because you skip the next problem and uh, the, the, the playback controls uh, movie should be at least 30 frames per second that's a must uh, subtitles are necessary if trailer has spoken text uh, more than 70% of the users are watching trailer without sound this is by default on Facebook this is by default on Steam so if you go for a landing page like this one please mind this is the window and this is actually already scaled uh, where are the people going to watch it this is not full screen then you have this um, uh, those playback controls that are going to take like 10% of your entire screen so if you put ultra wide here you actually avoid the problems already but you lose some some uh, some place uh, please mind this this is disabled by default uh, and people don't really tend to click those buttons okay mm, so uh, uh, that's the frame and then it's the same on Facebook again there are playback controls that are even bigger uh, again it's, it's disabled by default this is where your video is going to be displayed usually maybe just take the screenshot and put your gameplay footage in here just to s check if it fits or not if it's readable okay more tips uh, mind playback controls uh, make sure they do not cover any important part of your video or some UI elements that you want to show or there's something highlighted total length from 30 seconds up to 60 seconds plus logos I mean the game title 
uh, game log appears after gameplay, not in the middle. Uh, this again leads to the uh, to call to action. Developer and publisher logo goes only after the game logo and only at the end if necessary, but it's actually better to put call to action. And call to action is just something that you might see in the Cryospace trailer, just add to wishlist, available on Steam. Uh, so just, just click and follow and uh, either add to wishlist or buy the game. Uh, so yeah, that's basically this. And mind that Steam will use only the first trailer from 10 seconds. This is, I think, again, the case on the Steam Festival that once you hover over a, a banner, they will display a window with, uh, uh, with a trailer. Because so many people make, put logos on the beginning, they decided that, okay, by default, we're gonna start the trailer from 10 seconds, not from the beginning. Um, it's, it, they might change it in the future, but for now it is like this, so please mind that should, the 10 seconds should be interesting as well. Okay, then to summarize. Um, so there are a couple of success stories for this approach, the trailer driven uh, uh, development or the pre-production so-called. Uh, one of the uh, most notable are Thief Simulator. Uh, then there is House Flipper, this is huge, like 10 million sales. Uh, and it, would, it was started with the green light times uh, and then developed with prototype. There are a few success stories from our own portfolio, so that's Dissident, that's Medic, uh, Pacific Warfare, Cryospace, Riot Operator, uh, Transport Incorporated also went through this way, uh, Radio Commander also went through this way, but I have to be honest, it had a prototype because it uses unique mechanics. So if you're gonna have unique mechanics, that's something that sh uh, that's a place where you should consider a prototype first. Then there are a few more examples uh, either um, uh, that have very huge wish list uh, or they're just an interesting trend. Some bump simulator that the wish list is super huge at the moment. It's still not released yet. There are builders of uh, Egypt, builders of China, builders of. Uh, all the places that you can basically imagine uh, and this, that's a game that already is a series without even a single game released yet uh, but apparently people are really tend to click those uh, those wishlist additions because this appeals to either their uh, their humor or appear to the genre the, the type of the games that they enjoy and I mean the city builders in this case there are also fail stories. So, uh, for example, Daker Manager, that was a pre-production that we are very happy about, like like super quality, very good scenario, solid, solid team. But I hope to be honest, we actually failed to, to, to get the audience and get the wish list. And this project had to be scrapped because of that, even if, uh, if the team delivered a very nice trailer. Uh, apparently, the, there is no audience for, um, uh, for a game that where you play or take care of children at this stage. Apparently, well, 90% of, of male players are not attracted to them. Maybe female players are. It's still hard to say. We proved this with, uh, with this trailer that it's really hard to get there. There are a few more uh, fail stories. Uh, some teams failed to deliver. Some teams fell apart. Some teams failed to uh, deliver. The, the trailer that was visually attractive enough. Or again, there was no audience. Uh, but this is hard to measure if it's a reason because there is no audience or just the trailer was not satisfactory. So, well, it wasn't attractive enough. Okay, uh, so when the trailer driven development is a good idea. So uh, first of all, when it's gameplay is obvious and it's tested, if it's another slasher, if it's another city builder, then it might be a very good idea to start with a trailer driven development. Um, or if it's, you already had a prototype made at the game jam or stuff, uh, it, might be, it might be a good idea. Uh, if your team can deliver nice visuals and you're sure about this, uh, then, uh, then again, trailer driven development is a good idea, or maybe you just make game about blocks and uh, again it's visually attractive enough to prove uh, the the gameplay with uh, with just the trailer so when it is not a good idea 
Uh, well, that's when game needs unique core mechanics. Uh, well, then start the prototype. Uh, then do a trailer. Uh, then when it's technically possible or you have some doubts about this, um, if you're like not sure if you can achieve the goals like millions of units on screen or water mechanics that flow this and there, this is still an issue with, with well, this perf is performance issue. So um, you might do it, you might render the trailer, but uh, it won't be possible to make this game still, even with all the ray tracing skills and stuff uh, so better not uh, and again when there is not so much good idea uh, well if game already has a large potential audience like it's a sequel or IP adaptation then you basically that would be a waste of time to prove the concept well the, the first version of the game already proved that uh, that there is an interest if the first version of the game uh, was failure or no, well there were no sales satisfactory sales then you just shouldn't do a sequel or you have a make an IT adaptation of a of a large IP like a movie or a book they usually have the communities already they already prove that it's a good concept it's a good uh, story it's a good setting so trade driven development there might not be necessary useful it's better go with a teaser uh, or if you have enough money or will to make the game anyway, well, why go for trailer driven development? Just develop the, the gameplay itself and then record it. Uh, if you have doubts, then consider it. Okay, and that would be enough. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have some questions, please let me know. If not, uh, uh, we will skip, but I, there is a question. Isn't creating store page with mock-up trailer against team rules? They require you to create store pages only for games intended to be finished and shipped. Well, no, not shipped. Definitely not shipped. Well, you you're not supposed to release a game that is not shipped. Uh, but uh, it's okay to st uh, to start the game at um, at a very early stage. Uh, what they don't like is uh, when you have a trailer only, but uh, if you say the mock-up is, uh, is a game build, then it works and it's not directly against the rules. Well, the Steam verifies it and actually they, they still allow it uh, to, um, uh, to publish the pre-productions and just to check the wishlist additions. Uh, so as long as you don't uh, over externally use it and uh, try to promote games that won't ever happen uh, then it's then it's okay okay i don't see any more questions here oh there is one if if you show incomplete game and then your game receives full attention you basically need to start from scratch the whole dev process after all it costs more well no uh, basically, if you made the, the trailer and uh, you just proved that the, the development process, that the pitch was not satisfied, well, there is no audience. You actually save 90% of the budget rather than lose 10%. Otherwise, you would lose 100%, 10 times more money than you did for the pre-production. So uh, this, is, this actually saves your money. If you start from scratch, maybe that, that's because either the visual side was not attractive enough, maybe because uh, uh, the, the scenario was not good enough. Uh, but this needs to be analyzed deeply if that's the case. Sometimes it's better just to ask 20 people, 100 people, some consultants. This is why we make this event as well, uh, just to have some, uh, some specialists that will tell you what might be wrong about this game, about this game idea. Okay, uh, let me check if there is are there any more questions. And I think no. Then okay, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, that's all for today. See you around and, and good game development all. Cheers, bye.